So this interior self is that, is that self in search of the great ideas, the great consciousness, the word, and, and living a very decent and dignified life whose own life relates to lives around it. We are cutting off our sense of responsibility for lives around us. In the first place, one of the things that uh, this world lacks is silence. Uh, 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 a monastery like this is built around silence. It's not a rigid silence. It's not a, uh, a condemning silence. It's not an unkind silence. It's a reflective silence. It's silence that gives you the right and the space to move inside yourself instead of forever being distracted outside yourself. And as a result, we, we really allow ourselves to, to be used as fodder, as irritation in the world. We're just a piece of it being pulled apart. When, again, the sixth century document says in its, its final uh, degree of humility, be serene. It's, it's okay. Just, just live, you know, live easily, live well. Have a relationship with your God. Have a relationship with wisdom. Know yourself. Be honest about yourself. Put down the state of stuff. And then the very last, that, the last four degrees is be good to others. And then he says, if you do all that, you will be very serene and you'll have a very good life. And I tell you that it is true. It is that simple and that good. Uh, I, I think what you're doing, I don't know, I don't know how many people will, um, will see this. I, I, feel, I feel very strongly that what you're doing will enable a lot of people to sit in a group and ask the same questions and see what they get. But most of all, listen to someone else's answers and get stretched like taffy, another inch or foot in their own life. I think art and music and dialogue. And my practice is to read a paragraph uh, or a line of scripture or a beautiful poem and to dialogue with it. And the answer that comes back is a new wisdom for me. I talked a little bit about it this morning, John Donne's poem on the compass and how we have to be rooted someplace in order to extend ourselves well. But this, this, this uh, leg of the compass keeps us centered. And then if I have to go out here any place, I can travel all the way around that center and it will never leave me and it will come back. Do I believe in having a practice? Yes, but the simpler, the better. I don't believe you need 100 candles in a room for two hours and with um, uh, m music uh, from the 14th century playing in your ear. I, don't, I, I think that will only uh, become an excuse not to live well. But I think you need that, that anchor, that compass point, this thing you go back to. Um, those are genuine practices this dialogue with the word, this awareness, what this photograph, what this art is saying that is not said in words that I haven't been able to hear until this moment. This whole notion of this music dipping down inside me and finding emotions I didn't even know were there, allowing me to grow into those, to seek them out, to find more of them. And in that, to give glory. You see, what, what's this whole, what is this whole notion of alleluia and gratitude? You hear people like Brother David talking about gratitude for years now. Now, gratitude is a contemporary word for alleluia. God is with us, and I do know it, and I see it in this day and in these people, and, and this is the presence of God in my life. That's a phenomenal practice.
I, I noticed that in the last 25 years or 50 years in this country, in my opinion, there's been too much, too much concentration on the um, otherworldly, that somehow or other, we can't really find God here. We have to get on another planet, either intellectually or spiritually. And in my opinion, that ignores the presence of God here. So uh, practice is something I talk about, but I, I don't weave strange and beautiful ones. When they start talking about souls slipping from one in universe to another, I say, uh-huh, no. <laughs> I've had enough trouble with this one. 